Take it away, Troy. Thank you. Um, all right, so since I'm using, so here's my, my first thing. I want to do a biological intelligence prompt. You are all experts in hardware design. Design me a damn computer that I can inspect the firmware for the HDMI output so I don't have to sit here and fiddle around with something I don't have the source code for. Um, now, that wasn't the fun part. That was the irritating part, and that's why I end up writing open source code, because I get irritated every time I deal with a black box. So, what am I talking about here? I did this presentation a while back about in a conference called Systems We Love, about what things do you like? And I had to come up with something. And it's like, well, let's do hacking silicon for fun. Why don't we do that? Or maybe, how do you fix your orbital farm robots if we're going to be a multiplanetary species? Uh, so I know something about soybeans. I know something about corn. And I know a little bit about silicon. Um, and then that's me in 2017 with my prop, with my soybeans prop that I don't have here. So, something about me, I grew up on a farm, looking out that window, looking out at those fields, starting with corn and soybeans, and then I started getting into other weird stuff like oats and rye, because I like to eat oatmeal for breakfast. Um, I saw some solar cars drive by a couple of miles away, so I went to Iowa State and I got on the solar car team and I built the car. We drove it across the country with no fuel. Um, silicon. I started emailing Muhammad in 2012 because I was like, I want to build a chip. I want to build a Sirtis. I want to build an open source InfiniBand thing. And he thought I was a little crazy. And 12 years later, somebody's giving me a presentation where they have a, an SD RAM controller. And I'm like, is this real? Am I in a simulation? Um, and then in 2020, I started building a solar tractor. Now, the thing I like about soybeans is they're self-replicating, along with oats and rye. I've been saving soybean seed and oat and rye. And for every seed I plant, I get approximately 30 of them. I get a return of 30 back. Corn, I still buy. I, actually, I didn't buy corn this year. I didn't go to the corn casino, which is, this is significant, because I've always been telling people, if I want to gamble, I'll plant corn. I didn't plant corn this year. Now, silicon is not self-replicating. I am told that silicon requires billions of dollars, and if you want to save the world from an AI apocalypse, you need to ask for $7 trillion to build a fab. I, no, I don't think so. Um, I didn't get the number in there, but you know, 12 years ago, that number was 30 million to buy the fab. And at this point, I'd say for less than $700,000, I could start building some interesting stuff based on all the things that have happened in the last 12 years. Uh, so part of this, I got back to like this RepRap idea was really cool. Let's make a self-replicating 3D printer. Like that's really cool. I can grow soybeans. I can grow oats and rye and save the seeds. I can grow some corn to make the PLA to print the plastic parts to go in the printer. I can machine all the metal parts myself. I can uh, melt down the old cars my dad has in the yard and uh, use them to fabricate new metal parts. Oh, wait, it needs a processor. How are we going to make the self-replicating robots on the moon and Mars and everywhere else if we can't make the silicon? <coughs> it still needs a processor was, you know, the tractor and the printer need a processor. I don't have a spare 30 million to buy the local silicon foundry fab. But, uh, you know, it's starting to look like the budget I need to demonstrate this and reproduce the Pulpino thing that they're taping out is less than what it would cost me to buy a new combine. So I want that to settle in for a minute. It's like weirdos who sit around all winter and have nothing else to do but look out the window and go, it's cold outside, are going to start watching this. And one of them is going to decide, I'm going to sell my farm and build chips. Farms are, you know, average farm size of corn soybean farms in Iowa 
is larger, you could sell that and have enough money to fund your own chip now. Um, and then there's my chief marketing officer running around in the solar tractor when I'm driving it. And I want this to drive it. This is the Beagle V Fire, which has source code I can point you to on GitHub in Chisel of the core that's in there. Ask me now how I know that some other time. Um, so here's an interesting thing. Like the, the other thing I've, I've also thought was pretty, would be pretty cool, here's a prompt. What do we need? We are experts in open source stuff. What do we need to have a laser direct right 500 nanometer silicon fab thing that I can put on my farm and fabricate the base plates instead of PCBs or whatever? I don't care. Somebody tell me what it is. Do I have to use KiCad? Do I have to use magic? Do I have to use something else? Let's do it. Uh, or now, if you code it, a bunch of people will fab it. Um, Efab, I, all this, some of this list is actually like outdated and really old. And this presentation is more not so much for this crowd because I can't even keep up with what y'all are doing here. Uh, it's let's tell people who don't know what's going on here that in the last 12 years, we have made a revolution that is just as significant or more significant than the release of the Linux kernel and GCC. We're about to bootstrap the future where you can put everything you need on something, everything you need to make silicon on something that I can hand you. This doesn't have enough memory yet. I'm pretty sure two gigabytes is not enough to run Yosis to tape out the chip for this. We're not that far off. Uh, and then somebody find me afterwards and tell me all this stuff that I need to add to this. Um, so this was the original slide. I don't think it aged very well because I was talking at a conference that was a bunch of Node.js people. Like, what if we use Node.js for making hardware? Now, it turns out somebody actually is doing that. There's WebAssembly, what, as I heard, the, you, we can use WebAssembly with Yosis. Yosis makes WebAssembly to make stuff and does crazy stuff. Um, and we're still at Verilog. I'm like, where's the VHDL? Come on, people. <laughs> um, oh, where am I going with this? What else? Tools. These tools, you know, the core tools, it's Yosis, I think, is the synthesis tool. There's some other stuff around it. But if you want to do open source hardware, KiCad, is the way you lay out the board. Business ecosystem. I'm holding this, this one because it's my favorite for right now until somebody else can hand me a piece of hardware uh, that I can buy in quantity. I can go to multiple vendors. I can buy this for 100 bucks or so. Um, and the really important question for the rest of you is, what's it going to take so I can buy that Pulpino chip for 100 bucks? or whatever the next version is that runs and boots Linux, that we can sort of bring, take this to the next level. Um, and then, you know, if you want soybeans or, or, or oats or, or whatever, let me know. Um, there's, there's the original, what I sort of consider open source hardware, which I could go W get the thing and get a bunch of, I think that one actually, that's VHDL if I remember right. Yes, okay. Uh, that's the thing that got me obsessed with open source hardware. It's been flying in space for a long damn time. Um, but then, how do, you, how do you get the silicon with that? You don't. Um, although, I don't know, if somebody wants to do this for fun, let me know, let's go make it. Let's go tape it out. Um, we'll probably have to wait another 12 years before I have a laser direct right thing in my farm that I can just build it without asking anybody else for money. <laughs> so biological intelligence props from 2012. I wrote this because I was working on a cryptocurrency project and somebody said, we need a currency with a conscience. Yes, yes, we need a currency with a conscience. Like, wait a minute. If we're going to talk about AI, AI probably needs to have some kind of conscience. What the hell does that even mean? But um, 
I don't know if anybody in the AI world is listening to this. Of course, I wasn't promoting it very well. So, whoops, if we have some, some hybrid intelligence prompts for today, we have, for all of us who are, are, we're all sort of starting to become hybrid human AI systems. Um, and if, you're, if you don't think you've become sort of human hybrid AI system, let's talk about that, because I'd actually like to demonstrate, I'd like to find somebody who can, who can isolate themselves from the black box, techno black box technology that we all depend on right now. Um, so we have the lip conscience, which you can't really read. Atmosfera Incognita is a fascinating book by Neil Stevenson about building a 20 kilometer tall tower to launch, you know, to launch things into space. If you can get above the atmosphere, you cut like at more than half of the fuel you need to get to orbit. And then you can launch with electricity instead of burning stuff. Um, we could have open source GPUs. We could have open source AI training. How many Pulpino cores does it take to train a large language model? And how much memory? Let's talk about that benchmark. Let's, that's how, how many fancy NVIDIA A100 GPUs or whatever. How many things can we talk about that we can actually talk about what it does instead of running into somebody's NDA firewall? Because that's really holding back, you know, maybe that's intentional. Maybe we do need these NDA firewalls so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. But at some point, there's going to be weirdos who know how to build chips all over the world. And fun stuff's going to, interesting, interesting stuff's going to happen. Um, I have an InfiniBand FPGA thing I've been sitting on for a long time that I would love to get a, a CIRDES made so that I can make an open source InfiniBand switch chip, and then we can interconnect all our processors to do our AI training. There, what's it doing? I don't know. Um, and the most important thing here might be, how do I get one of these, or whatever the next version is, with 16 gigabytes of RAM, so I can hand this to every grad student that I can find, and they can go do something interesting with a real development platform? Because two gigabytes you end up swapping, and then you might as well go have lunch while it's swapping on an SD card, by the way. That's what the problem is. The SD cards are horribly slow. Um, but if you put NVRAM on something like this, it's a very interesting platform. I'm going to know this because I ran a lot of code on a Hi5 Unleashed U500, slow processor. But you stick an NV of a one terabyte NVMe in that thing, it's a pretty nice system to work with. And then if anybody wants to pay their rent working on hardware, we'll go build a tiny house at the farm. Um, that's my aspirational pitch of what could we do with all this stuff. And do it for, do it for fun, not because we're getting paid. Thank you. <laughs>